Greetings, I'm Ruth Ruperta. And I'm Brody, come to Papa Moore. I'm not gonna let you write these anymore. And we're gonna present all the goodies we've gathered, which we'll discuss and hopefully argue. But luckily, for every single one of you out there, there is a shut it up button when we need to quiet the other one. You're supposed to say like, Brody, come to Papa Moore. Well, like, then you can like start that. saying it. Oh my God, you're the worst. Listen, chat, we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get to it, shall we? We're gonna dive right into our top story with the esports and pay-per-view situation. During episode 16 of the Dextero Talk Show, esports caster Paul Red Eye Chalona told Richard Lewis that there is no doubt in his mind that esports will eventually end up on PPV. His argument was that although putting it behind a paywall will create a viewership, it would guarantee viewership is paying. Brody, you must have thoughts about this considering Twitch is now going behind this like paywall for a lot of people. So, are you for it or are you against this whole pay-per-view situation? Well, this is, this. it's a tough thing obviously you need to start guaranteeing money be for esports things besides just sponsors right yeah. you, you can't just rely on that your, your whole thing or else we're just NASCAR you got to have some sort of platform that you can guarantee an income on and pay-per-view would do that the issue though with this whole thing is that they don't realize that they're gonna lose probably all their sponsorship money at that point because a lot of these a lot of these sponsors are looking at a specific demographic and that demographic is a younger age, an age that isn't going to be paying for pay-per-view, right? Uh -huh. Okay, You're, are you talking about the age that is paying a lot of freaking dough for nothing in Fortnite? Are you talking about the age that is definitely subscribing to all their favorite streamers that already have a lot of dough, like, I don't know, Shroud, definitely don't need to subscribe to them, but they are. They got money in their pockets, and they got mommy's money, and they're spending it on Twitch. It's that an is, easy sub button. That their is parents a small already chunk have of people, their credit though. Card. No, they already have their credit card attached to their Twitch. Why would they not just sub to watch whatever tournament they want to watch? They'll do it, Brody. If they love that eSport, they'll do it to watch it, and they'll pay. They'll pay for all of it. Why not? Let the broadcaster make the money. Because you're still, then, here's the thing, you're still, as they said, you're still gonna crater the viewership huge, and that's a lot less eyes now seeing a product. Like again, like say you take like a, a State Farm, you know, that's been a sponsor for RLCS before. They want that. Way to plug your own freaking sponsor from your own broadcast cable, no, whatever. No, it's, it's part of the argument, I All have right. to. You Go, dummy. keep going then. You're interrupting, no. Oh my it's God, good point, go make it. Okay, so basically, basically, they want a demographic, they don't need, they don't need the, the, money from them right now. These kids are buying insurance, but in the future they are. When they grow up, <laughs> when they grow up, they're gonna need insurance, and State Farm's trying to get in while they're young so that in their mind, when they're like, hmm, I actually need insurance now, State Farm is the first thing that comes to their head, they right? They could easily still do that so behind the, a paywall But these are less eyes. Less these are people not watching anymore. It then, will not already, work. then they'll pay subsidize their money they're getting from- will not work. Yes, it will. They're, they can subsidize the money they're getting from no. the pay-per-view, and the sponsors don't have to pay as much money to invest. Why not? Everybody wins. They're still getting eyeballs. They still see the eyeballs. <laughs> not gonna work. We're over this topic. Yesterday, we talked about how Team Fight Tactics has overtaken League of Legends in Twitch viewership. Shortly thereafter, Riot announced the first awesome. official tournament for TFT. It will feature 64 Twitch streamers who will compete for the Team Fight Tactics Twitch Rivals Championships, Jesus, and potential, or potentially earn a piece of the 125,000 prize pool. It goes down on July 17th and 18th. Now, Marissa, this is very fast for uh, a, a game to just jump into esports. And I'm wondering if you think this is gonna to be too quick now for this, or if they should have waited a little bit longer to see if that those people are gonna stick around in this uh, game. First of all, that was a cop-out mute because you had a throw, so literally- Wow, you still, no, and, like, you were talking too much. And then, no, I still have to wait for you to finish your question before I can even answer it. That is t such a cop-out so mute. So answer my question. No, don't do that again. You're skirting my question. Because that's you question. being lazy. You're skirting my question. No, I'm not. Okay, answer fine. Answer the question. I, do, I mean, yeah, it is too soon. It, it's too soon. Now we're playing a game that's a mod of a mod which mm -hmm. is, you know, a little odd, but people uh, are into it. A little, but it, a little odd that it's a model of a mod? <laughs> exactly, we can write a little uh, rap about it for sure, but <laughs> uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I feel like if people are enjoying this, why not give them a, a moment to shine? Why not give them an audience? Why not give them some clout in this world? And, and I guess they have it already because they're Twitch streamers and people are watching them play it. So mm -hmm. just give, give them more love, why not? Yeah, I'd have to agree that jumping on it early is probably a good idea. I mean, like if you wait too long, it, people are so ADHD, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. we, we see it with, especially with the Battle Royals, like Apex, you know, fell off pretty quick after it came out. Maybe now they can get it back on the rise, but it, you have to capture that audience right away. Mm. And by doing this, like, all right, 
audience right away. We can get people invested in the ecosystem of watching an eSport about this. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to forget about it. There's so many other, there's Auto Chess, there's Underlords, mm -hmm. there's so many different versions of this. They might jump over to those and start watching those if they jump in first. So being the first to, to have a real kind of eSport and competitive scene, yeah. I think it's very smart about it. Now, I'm never going to watch it because it's all RNG and it's basically Hearthstone all over again. Uh, no, but there's still skill involved in playing these games. You can't just say that, oh, it's all RNG. It's no, like just deck building. Pretty. You have to hope that you get the right cards. No, but there's still strategy involved in placing the cards and collecting. Like, listen, it's, dude, there's still something there that you that requires skill, or else you wouldn't be watching well, these guys play. Well, to a degree. There, there, you can increase your chance of good luck, and that that's about the extent of it. I don't understand, by rubbing a Buddha belly beside you? Yeah, yeah, yeah right, you just, that's a <laughs> tactic. It actually transfers into the game, it's connected with Bluetooth and gives you better RNG. Yeah, that's what <laughs> people wanna watch. Listen, all right, we all know that one of the hurdles Battle Royale Esports has to overcome is, in fact, RNG. Well, two Fortnite pros took to Twitter to offer their solution for the problem. FaZe Clan's Nate Hill suggested that Siphon be in all modes and that everyone should start with a pistol and 50 wood. However, TSM's High Distortion disagreed and said Fortnite should employ regenerative shields like Halo instead of Siphon. Mm. Brody, yeah. you are a Halo man. I am. Okay, and I know you're not really down with all things RNG esports. Correct. So, um, are these boys onto something? Whose idea do you like better here? So, actually, oh. actually, I like both the ideas. Okay. I, I'm, I've been a huge proponent. Back when I was playing PUBG, I'm like, bro, we need well. loadouts. And I was hoping that Call of Duty would have done that too. Dropping in with loadouts just completely eliminates any of that RNG that comes from having to find a gun right away. How many times have people out there scrambled? I know you all did this too. Where you drop in, you get no gun, and now you're just trying to punch people that have great guns. Like that, that's <laughs> that's not good, right? Like it's it's fun to watch though. Uh, it, it, well, I, I guess if you can get get the wins, but like get the the fist fights wins. But it's just it's. It's frustrating, and I think it's just can be very annoying for a viewer as well. If you're watching yeah. a streamer playing, it's just very annoying to watch. So mm. eliminating that by dropping in with a pistol and some wood gives you a base that you can defend yourself with, right? Yeah. Like you can you have something to start with and something that you can actually come out on top with. Mm -hmm. Now I also do like the idea of getting health back because it's not fun watching someone or sit there in a bush mm. drinking potions or anything, right? So if you can right. kill someone, you're not being rewarded for it. So siphon is a cool idea, but I also like regen. And uh, now Fortnite is already a more defensive game, so I think regen would suit it better. But, uh, you know, Siphon all game modes would work as well as long as there's some sort of regen on health. Okay, what if there is a certain area in the map that everybody knows about, that there are certain weapons there and you can drop there? Oh, that'd be great as well. Right? Yeah. I, I also thought that'd be cool. Imagine if there's like, okay, you get two immediate, like, SMGs over here, but this area has one really powerful sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. Now, one of your guys isn't gonna have a gun, but if he's good with the sniper rifle, you can come out on top. So, it makes you think, eliminates RNG. I like it. I agree with both of them. I think uh, something like that should be implemented, but it's epic. Do you really think they're gonna do that? Okay, you... Okay, everybody, let's count the days now until Brody can't ever S-talk epic You ever can't again. stop me! You, you, you won't be able to, Brody. They're gonna you start can't. making over Rocket League and you can't say a damn thing. You thing. can't stop me. Okay, somebody Anyways, this so we can we show have back already to talked later. about sub-only streams, so let's talk about it again. But now there seems to be a hiccup in the whole plan. Apparently many video game developers have explicit rules stating that it would violate their terms of service to charge viewers a fee to watch their games. What developers are we talking about? Oh, you know, just <laughs> Valve, Blizzard, and Riot. <laughs> developers that run their own esports divisions and large broadcasters will find a way to run sub-only streams, but individual and small streamers might be out of luck here. Now, do you really think that this is gonna be good for Riot to go to sub-only streams and like smaller streamers and say, hey, you can't uh, play our game behind a paywall? Uh, I mean, we all kind of knew this was coming, right? We knew this was coming, but the thing is like they can't really ask, these big publishers can't ask small streamers to not do this anymore. Like if that's what they're basing their money off of, then they're making not that much money, but they still have people tuning in because they're playing this specific game. And they, can't, I feel like it's been free for them for so long. Mm -hmm. They've been able to use it, no problem, for so long. How can these big companies just come in and just take it away like that? Like it seems, really evil, and I really uh -huh. hope they don't do this to small streamers, it's not okay. Well, They're struggling enough. A absolutely, I mean, as you said, first off, it's already been a norm. Yes. Now you come in and be the first developer to try to shut that down, you're getting a lot of hate sent your way. And uh, the other argument can be made that you're not paying, I'm not subbed because I wanna watch League of Legends gameplay, there's plenty of free content, I can just go out there, I'm subbed yeah. because I wanna 
support the streamer. Yes. I'm subbed for that person's personality mm -hmm. or, or whatever, right? Now, I guess you could also argue that if you're subbed to a top player that you're mm -hmm. there for the gameplay. But uh, there is an argument to be made that I'm there for the personality. So how do you differentiate that as a developer? Like, okay, is this person telling the truth or are they actually mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. for the gameplay? So Well, now I have to ask you, Brody, because you play so much Rocket League. Uh, I, yes, I do. What, what if I'm Psyonix is just like, you know what, Brody, I'm really sorry. Um, we're actually going to put this stuff behind a paywall for ourselves. You can no longer play this behind a paywall if you had subs that did pay to watch you. Oh, well, first off, I guess it's it's hard because in my specific situation, I probably wouldn't be doing sub-only streams because then I have, like, what, two people watching me? Ah, uh, so, you guys. Sub to, sub to Brody. No, no, you you should sub to Brody. He's actually a really good You streamer. didn't even give me your Twitch Prime last time. So, I know, like, but I still have it. Like? Who knows where I'm going <laughs> to drop it? I'm going to go start streaming right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it is a very difficult situation that developers are going to have to be very, very mm. careful uh, and tiptoe around if they do want to take action. Yeah, of course, and not to upset small streamers, but also just streamers in general, people exactly. that love playing their games. Like, don't upset your communities, people. Please, please. Oh, All right, on. it's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. Our first clip comes from Moon Moon, who's battling it out with some Mario Maker 2 trolls. Yeah. That was the trick. Did you see it? Whoa. <laughs> see, this kid thinks that he can trick me by putting that down there, chat. But he's honestly so... <laughs> Instantly Yo. has to eat his own words. Yeah, I love... See, but honestly, it's like... Streamers. Whoops. This, this is every last streamer because it's all live. This gets clipped. Yeah. Like, you think you got me well? Oh, you definitely no, got that, me. That's what happens when you're a little cocky, though. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, it's entertaining, though. Especially oh, when you get shut down like that. I, lo I love it's just the instant shut up and like, all right. I think I lost this one, guys. <laughs> it's brilliant. I, uh, man, I'm loving all of these Super Mario Maker 2 clips. All of them. I'm, I'm going to make a level for you to play. I, okay. <laughs> we'll Anyways, next up, we have a clip from Cross uh, Counter TV featuring our friend Jackie O'Manor. Jackie was taking part in a speed dating event at a CEO after party when a previous suitor interrupts her conversation with Gutex. <laughs> Intelligence and being well read is what. I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't get your name at all. I'm Maybe. sorry, it's Jacqueline. Jack Jacqueline. Sorry. I'm so sorry. There's no introduction. I'm well, so this sorry. is where this is where you fucked up. Who else? Was it me? Why would it be her that you didn't get her name? Did she say I don't want to tell you my name? No. For real? Did she say, no, I'm not telling you my name? It doesn't necessarily have to be on me. Maybe she didn't, maybe she didn't think that you were worthy of her asking your name. You're right. That's, but that's not, that's not me. Oh, goddamn. Uh, it is you f***ing up. Because every single interaction should be like, hey, what's your name? I'm Ryan. Jacqueline. Nice to meet you, Jacqueline. Every interaction starts with, what's your name? <laughs> hey, okay. honest, honestly, I don't even really care about like who's right and wrong there. I just yeah. love Jackie's. Jackie's <laughs> like sitting there also like slamming her drink. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> I love Jack. When's the next so much. round? When's the next round? Listen, the thing is, I do love that Gutex is doing this. And it is a little awkward for people to meet each other, and the fact that he's doing this at CEO. This is just like the in the infancy of what he's trying to do here. It's like yeah. a whole speed dating thing at CEO. It's so great, but there really only is a handful of women that show up. Yeah. So the fact that Jackie was one of them, also like you should have already known her name. She is one of the commentators <laughs> at CEO. So uh, you should know, definitely know who Jacqueline O'Manor is, but um, it, it's cool, man. You, you'll learn for next time. I just don't want to piss off Gutex. I want that though, but not dating, just to meet people at the party just and stream all yeah. the interactions that people have. I think you get some really, really interesting content. That I think it's a good idea. Don't, but don't hold idea. it just to dating. I think it'd be cool for everybody just to switch tables and go around. And just hang out and meet each other. Yeah. You can do that. Like it's, it's dating style, but just meeting and interacting and increasing your repertoire of people that you know at these events. It's, it's so fantastic. I love that he put this on. I think it's sick. 100. Let's, Listen, let's kudos to you, Gutex. It truly is the best time of day when you scroll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things the pros bless us with from the timeline. We especially love it when they follow trends. Canadian pretty boy and Rainbow Six Pro has got something for you. He says, I'm selling gamer boy spit. Who wants in? 
Jesus. That's off the water thing. Um, like, lots of people in the gaming community got into this. Like, the bathwater just seems to bring us all together. But it's kind of gross. Okay, like yeah. I actually watched this uh, video that this girl put out. It's really gross. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of disgusting. And like I'm, I, I know that we're not supposed to. I don't even want to shame because I, I don't want to shame. I don't like the whole slut shaming thing at all. Um, but she it, was trolling. It, it was. Yeah, I hope that it was trolling. She's trolling, but I guarantee you, if she actually sells those. She's going so, to sell that's some. That's what I mean. So when does a troll not become a troll anymore if she's actually just getting views and making money? Well, and she, she, got, she got over three million views on this. Yeah, she did technically call everyone that's going to buy it thirsty, right? So she is being very abrupt what she thinks about people that would buy that. So I think yeah. that was the key that she she knows how dumb this is, but she's but, gonna do it anyways. Uh, yeah. Hey, if you make money, make money. No, for sure. Listen, make make your money, girl. Like do your thing. But yo, that's nasty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not buying anything. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Brody already put his order in. Like <laughs> All right. Anyways, would it be a profound thoughts without hugs? <laughs> sure, but it wouldn't be as spicy. Here is responding to Sarah Kelly on Twitter when she asked people to share their worst date ever. He said, "Reeked of weed when she got in my car. Told me she smoked a bowl because she panicked I wouldn't show up. Forgot her wallet, so I had to pay. <laughs> Needed water. Made me wait 30 minutes at her driveway for a half-empty bottle that she drank because she got thirsty after fully changing into PJs. <laughs> That's uh, wild, I guess. Not your typical date, but you know, I I actually replied, and, and I I do feel this is true. To be honest, I said respect for her." Um, you know, for doing that and just being her, I do bet that there's someone out there that uh, would enjoy that. Not me, but someone. Wait, would enjoy somebody <laughs> completely kind of ignoring you and like focusing on whatever was going on well, with them and like even, changing into her PJ? I think that's, that's the thing, though. Rude. I think that's the thing is, Hugs has a very uh, style of date that he goes on because that's him, right? Everyone has their own. Uh -huh. Some people wouldn't even have gotten that far. Uh, someone actually did reply to beyond that saying, yeah, I would have just asked her, hey, want to just go inside and smoke another one and hang out and watch movies? So they yeah. wouldn't even go on to the other part where she'd forget her wallet, right? Right, yeah, maybe yeah, maybe if hugs were more accepting of that part of it, maybe they could have had a nice, lovely relationship. That's what I'm it's all about, uh, it's, uh, everyone's got someone special out there that may be weird to everyone else, but for them it works. Her soulmate's out there, she'll find it. Listen, our <laughs> last profound thought comes from Riot PR Maven, Jackie Collins. I feel a subtweet coming. People think it's cute to hit you with a, why aren't you here? I don't know, did you tell me? Did you invite me? Did you make an effort? Did you make a plan? Did you pre-book my time? Spontaneity has merits, but you wild AF if you think I'm sitting on my ass waiting for you to show up now. Oof! Fair. I just can relate to that uh, with uh, Mr. Kitchener over here, because you cannot do that to him. What? You cannot be like, oh, you, why aren't you here? Just come on down when you're in Toronto. And he's like, no, nah, you're going to pay for my Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's, that's different. It is hard. I mean, like, I love spontaneity. I try my best not to plan ahead, just because, now, not because it's, th this is actually an interesting topic. A lot of people have said they hate spontaneity because it's <laughs> like, oh, that person's just trying to find something better to do. No, for me, it's because I've had so many people flake on me that I now don't book ahead of time with them. I'm like, okay, you wanna, you wanna hang out with me right now? Cool, <laughs> I prefer that than trying to plan five days from now. Also, what if five days from now, I ain't feeling it. Now we're both gonna have a bad time because I'm still gonna go, I ain't gonna bail, but you know, maybe neither one of us wanna be there. Okay, but what if like a situation is happening and you're like, oh my God, why wasn't I invited to this? And you're like on Twitter and then somebody notices that you're not here and then they just respond to you like, hey, why aren't you here? Like, isn't that a bad feeling to get? Like, no, I don't you didn't invite me, a -hole? me. The fact that someone You weren't even, noticed to begin with, though. You weren't invited. That's fine. There's a lot of people in the world. I'm not expecting everyone to remember me at every single time, uh, moment, you know? The fact that someone did eventually think of me would mean a lot to me. Okay, BT Dubs Brody is planning a party that he put out on Twitter for some reason. So yeah. he, he's made come it public now. If you want to come to Kitchener and hang out with Brody... See, I invite everybody. You're all welcome. Tyler's like, how come I wasn't invited? It's an open... <laughs> it's, it's an open, open policy. I invited everyone. He's That's how you get around door it. He's got policy, <laughs> and he's apparently going to have one of those bowls that you're supposed to put your keys in, so I don't know. It's one of those parties. What's the, I have no idea what you're talking about, so okay. let's move on, because it's time to get to some crowd control. It's the time to show you a bunch of crazy things. Let's start with things that are cuddly, though. Uh, Unaviable posted on Reddit what Eevee would look like if you crossbreeded them with a ton of different Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys now to let me know in the comments and in Twitch chat which Aww. is going to be your favorite. These are adorable A. So cute. Oh, my gosh. They're so hard to choose from. Because I'm 
see, you want to lean toward like the Pika breed crossover, but you can't because there's so many. I'm good going ones. with Stellans because that is a Viking Eevee, and I want to live in a world where there is a Viking Eevee just roaming at, around. Look, look at, at that beard. Look at Bidu. Bidu's so there's dumb. A, there's a nice little, I can't tell if it's supposed to be a beard or maybe just like a, I don't know, lion's mane, uh, but just in the bottom. I think about, it looks great. How about Slakoth? Slakoth. That, Slakoth. That, that one looks like uh, it was hanging out with uh, Hugs Date there. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, red. red eyed AF. No, I love those. See, I like when you show me drawings that are cute, not those the, nasty Okay, ones well that then tomorrow getting. I'll make sure that they're not. Because I, I can't you have you having a good time here. Okay, anyway. With lots of games popping up in that 8-bit old school style, it's oh, no wonder that we don't have more trailers remade in older style. So, Hoopaloo, mm -hmm. Hoopali, Hulu P <laughs> on YouTube is taking initiative though, and he redid Death Stranding trailer in the style of PS1. Like, I want to see, I think what's interesting about that is I think a lot of games are relying on just good graphics to make the game good, right? Sure. They just want to give you some eye candy to shock you, but mm. distract you from the fact that there's no gameplay and no good content. Whereas this game content. relies on complete and utter confusion. Right. So, <laughs> so I want to see if, like, if, it's, if some games, modern games, are redone like that if yeah. they're still going to be good because then you can really judge it based off its character. I mean, sure. You guys are also <laughs> welcome to watch the rest of that on YouTube, right? Yes. It's up on YouTube. What was the name again? Uh, Hulo P. Hey, you got Hulo it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, you got it. Okay. <laughs> it was a wild okay. name. Anyways, remember. for our last one, it's time to give you guys a little life lesson. Great. So sometimes you set out for a challenge, you know, but you start to fall behind. You're like, yeah. oh man, I don't know if I can ever, this ever come back from this. Yeah. But suddenly, suddenly, you get an, a burst of knowledge and energy. You're like, all right, I can do this. And you see the finish line coming right at you. As you finally overcome your goals. Uh -huh. Literally coming right at you. Uh -huh. No matter what you do, no matter what you do in life, kids, you're always going to get smacked down. It's not worth trying. Don't go outside. Stay inside. Play video games, and you'll never be disappointed. Oh my God! That no, that's not no. That's don't. all you that's can take. Real. Yeah. Listen, no. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose. That is just life. Okay. There are always ups, and there will always be downs. And when you're in your down, that's okay. Just remember, there will be an up again. You just have to try harder next time. That's all you gotta do. Every failure is a life lesson, okay? So from there, I'm sure that gamer jump back in and try it again and maybe he won his next match, okay? No, Children, he probably uninstalled the game and from Brody went Brigham, and cried. Leap X more. Okay, that's it for you to remember. You can always hit us up on our socials. Just to say hi or send us some stuff to react to. We are Squad State everywhere. And we'll see you next time.